I don't know if any of you have noticed, but we live in quite possibly the most exhausting period of time in history for casual conversation. Among strangers, you need to watch every word you say in fear of offending the wrong person, especially online, or you'll have an army of thought police dox you, get you fired, and likely blacklisted from any creative industry. I've never been much of a people person anyway, so the C has been a great opportunity for me to relish a break from society and tiresome social norms. And the perfect game to spend that time with is Postal 2. That's the ticket. Despite being incredibly dated, it is 17 years old after all, Postal 2 still offers a surprising amount of relevant social commentary while also being an incredibly goofy, jank-ass game that is definitely not meant to be taken seriously. Postal 2 represents the best parts of satire while still being a pretty fun shooter with a surprisingly dense sandbox to explore. So let's find out how Postal 2 has managed to reach cult classic status while being the least politically correct game imaginable. Christ, it's as hot as the devil's rectum in here. When did we move to hell? You were the one who insisted on relocating for that stupid video game job. Yeah, well, crack doesn't buy itself, you know. Might as well tackle the source of Postal's infamy first, because it's the main reason you would have any interest in playing it. Nobody plays Postal 2 for the shooting mechanics. No, the real source of its appeal is the pure insanity of the town of Paradise, Arizona, and its resident mass murderer, the Postal Dude. And one for Bo, and one for little Johnny. And one for Bobo the Space Monkey. The devs didn't pull any punches with their jokes. Expect mockery of rednecks, women, minorities, little people, Christians, Muslims, activists, cops, pretty much every demographic you could think of. Don't think that the developers spared themselves. Running with Scissors even has an office building in the game where you can kill the CEO, Vince Desi. Nothing personal, man, but you're fired. <laughs> but I just started yesterday. <laughs> now, obviously, comedy is highly subjective, so what I find funny, you might roll your eyes or cringe at. So instead of explaining jokes, I'll just let the game speak for itself. Bless me, Father, for I have really sinned. Really? I'm not kidding here. Big sinner. Yep. Did you drop an offering in the box? Yes. Then you are forgiven, my son. Next! Thanks. Yeah, lowbrow is putting it lightly. The plot of the game is simple. The postal dude has to complete his daily chores. That's literally it. Basically, crazy shit happens as he tries to buy groceries, cash his paycheck, confesses sins, and other mundane tasks. The two expansions, Apocalypse Weekend and Paradise Lost, add a little more story, but it's just more goofy shit. Every set piece is just an excuse to tell more jokes. But what sets Postal 2 apart from other comedic games, like Borderlands, is that the absurd tone of the game is integrated directly into the game mechanics. Like I said before, nobody plays Postal 2 for the shooting, at least not with boring standard weapons. The Deagle is fine, surprisingly accurate actually, but the M16 and Spaz 12 suck ass, especially on higher difficulties. A part of me wants to believe that this was intentional, to encourage using more psychotic methods of dealing with the ever annoying screams of civilians in your way. Luckily, Postal Dude is a master arsonist and trained with every melee weapon imaginable. Are protesters marching outside of your workplace? 
douse them in gasoline and light a match. If the man bacon manages to set you ablaze as well, just unzip your fly and give yourself a golden shower. Yes, pissing on yourself is a core mechanic of this game. If melee is more your style, you can splatter heads with a sledgehammer, dismember with a machete, decapitate with an axe, or just beat them bloody with brass knuckles. The machete, sledgehammer, and later the scythe in Apocalypse Weekend can all be thrown, causing a truly gruesome death for those poor normie bastards. For crowd control, you've got a grenade launcher, rocket launcher, napalm launcher, a rotting cow head that makes people puke blood, and the well-hidden weapon of mass destruction, which infects everyone with the plague that can spread between enemies. As you can imagine, weapon balance is irrelevant, just mess with whatever you find funny. One major complaint I have with modern sandbox games is the idiotic desire to make the world as large as possible. I'm looking at you, Ubisoft. Other than for deceptive marketing to the casual masses, I can't see any point in wasting the resources in modeling a nearly country-size open world with nothing worthwhile to explore. They practically coined the term wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the latest and probably worst offender. I don't care if you like the game, that's fine, but you've at least got to admit the world had a million shitty half ass quests in a pointlessly huge open world. Postal 2 is the complete opposite. The world is compact, yet full of secret areas and items worth finding. When you start the game, all you've got is your trusty shovel, a box of matches, and a bottomless bladder. Everything else is found in the world. Incredibly useful health pipes. that can heal you beyond max health, and catnip, which if smoked, can slow down time itself, are scattered throughout the world. Every building in the game has a fully modeled interior that can be explored, an increasing rarity in modern games. There's even a massive Taliban base hidden in the sewers behind your trailer that you never visit during the story. Ammo and healing are limited in the campaign levels, so you're incentivized to explore to find supplies. Simple game design principles like this are what make classic shooters fun. Replace that with regenerating health and limitless ammo, and you get the hallway shooters that nobody likes. Hi there, would you like to sign my petition? I'm sorry. Shit, would you please sign my petition? No way, you freaking pinko. You gotta be fucking kidding. Close enough. Okay, so the obvious problem with making a parody of life in America and the current social issues is that your art is going to be forever dated in that time period. How many of you know who Gary Coleman is? What about the Waco siege in 1993? Even Al Qaeda probably feels like a distant memory to Zoomers. Right-wing protests about violent video games have turned into left-wing Twitter crazies censoring them and inserting propaganda. This country has changed a lot in 17 years, and Postal 2 doesn't quite have that South Park charm that makes the older seasons enjoyable to this day. So a lot of Postal 2's jokes will probably fall flat. But the sheer absurdity of the situations and the crazy stupid stuff you can do are entertaining enough that I was fine with the dated references. Yep, looks like everything worked out pretty good in the end. Hey, champ. Is it true you were the inspiration for Viagra? As far as you know, babe. The apocalypse. The apocalypse never changes. Except in this case, when it's brought upon by a man and his dog. You've heard it a hundred times already. I've talked about it before at least once or twice, but the days of expansions are long gone. I mean shit, the days of appropriately priced DLC are long gone. You can blame EA, Activision, Ubisoft, whoever you want, 
but if the idiot consumers didn't buy microtransactions, they wouldn't exist. So back to Postal 2. In 2004, Running With Scissors released the Apocalypse Weekend expansion. At the end of the main game, Postal Dude shoots himself in the head because he can't tolerate his wife, the bitch, anymore. Honey, I'm home. You won't believe the day I've had. About friggin' time. Did you remember my rocky road? Don't. Apocalypse Weekend begins with waking up in the hospital after miraculously surviving. The expansion takes a major departure from the design of the main game by opting for a more linear experience. It's still pretty funny, with a lot more meta humor, if you're into that sort of thing. Halfway through the story, Postal Dude is hired to destroy the headquarters of RWS's former publisher, Whiptail Entertainment. For legal reasons, it's called Bullfish Entertainment, and the name is censored in-game. You can tell RWS despised their publisher because after killing everyone inside in typical Postal fashion, you later return with a nuke to wipe out what's left of it. Vince is gonna love this. Now, to get my ass to minimum safe distance before this thing blows. The expansion also features Silent Hill-esque hallucinations with evil Gary Coleman clones, mad cow Tourette zombies, and other weird shit. Apocalypse Weekend comes with Postal 2 on Steam, so you might as well play it if you like the base game. When one becomes yeah, that's what they all say. Paradise Lost is actually a little disappointing. Not because of its length, or price, or quality. No, it actually would be an amazing expansion if it released a decade ago. The real problem is that it was released in 2015, and yet it's still stuck in the 2000s, graphically, comedically, and mechanically. Hardcore fans probably don't have a problem with this, and gameplay-wise, I don't mind it at all, but the comedy suffers a bit. Hey, former child star. How about sharing some of those child star royalties for this clearly on-the-level charity I've got here? Listen, jerk. You better watch your tongue, for you're standing in the presence of greatness. I am Zack Ward, leader of the Farsi clan here at my wondrous Winter Wonderland compound and world-renowned actor extraordinaire. <laughs> yeah, I can't say I'm familiar with your body of work. Gary Coleman passed away in 2010, but his character returns in Paradise Lost using recycled lines from the main game. I don't think it's disrespectful, but it's just a strange choice. There's also a lot of missed opportunity to mock modern social issues like social justice, the alt-right, social media, yet it's barely touched upon. Maybe that's part of the point. After the nuclear blast from Apocalypse Weekend, Postal Dude's dog, Champ, leaps from his car to chase a cat. Postal Dude tries to chase him, but crashes his car and falls into a coma for 11 years. After waking up, he returns to Paradise to discover it's been divided into tyrannical factions that control each section of the town. Monday through Friday, you'll run Errand Boy for each leader to get help in saving Champ, who has become a giant demon dog from all of the radiation. Basically, it's Postal 2.5. For $6, you essentially get a true, full-fledged sequel to the game. If you're wondering about the real Postal 3, don't bother. It's a giant piece of shit, and not in a charming way. So, after all these years, there's actually a Postal 4. Sadly, I can't recommend it on principle because it's an early access game, but judging by the early gameplay, it looks pretty damn good and definitely a proper sequel to Postal 2. So when it releases, expect a review, but for now, enjoy a game that's not afraid to offend people. A game that's still banned to this day in New Zealand. A game where you can drink your own piss and shove a cat's anus onto the end of your shotgun. Go Postal. Sorry for the long wait between videos, guys. 
I wish I had someone or something to blame other than myself, but I don't. I'm currently working on another video though, so I promise it won't be a three week wait this time. Give the video a like if you want to see more reviews. Check out my Resident Evil 3 remake review if you haven't seen it, it's by far my most popular video. Feel free to comment suggesting other games I should make videos on, I'll pretty much play anything. See you next time guys.